Hello and welcome to the sixth video in the beginner's quad build. Now so far we have got to this stage but before we talk about what we're going to do in this video let me just remind you that this is part of a series so if you're interested in starting from the very first principles this is video six in the series by going back to the beginning you can watch all of these one after the other. Now these videos are designed very much for those of you that have never built a quadcopter before so I'm laboring some of the points that if you've built one or two in the past you're probably fully aware of but if you have never built one of these things before or you're not sure of the steps to go through to get to the other end and have it flying well then by hopefully following this series you'll find out everything you need to know so if we just go back to the desk let's have a look at how we are looking right now in the last video we installed the motors and the ESCs onto the frame and then I've also just temporarily popped in the flight controller on top let me turn it around we probably get a better view so there's the, how the flight controller is going to fit in and in this one we're going to spend a bit of time doing a couple of things first of all we are going to download Betaflight onto the computer Betaflight is the bit of software that runs on the computer and also on the flight controller and allows us to set up how we want everything to work now Betaflight is quite a clever piece of technology and it's free so there isn't any excuse for using anything else so we'll first of all do that and the reason that we're going to do that before we go anywhere else is I want to plug the flight controller into the computer and test that it's okay so the first thing then is to download Betaflight and what you need to do is to Google something like Betaflight Configurator Download. I've also put a link in the description. You'll find the area in GitHub that you can download the latest version. There's lots of different versions for Macs, Linux, Windows, all kinds of different things. So download and install the one for your operating system. Once you have got that all installed, you can double click the Betaflight icon and it'll look something like this. Now, if we go and just insert what the desk looks like, here we have our flight controller ready to be plugged in. I haven't installed anything. We haven't got it plugged into the 4-in-1. There isn't anything soldered on here at all. And again, the reason we're doing this is that I want to plug it in and test it before I do anything with a soldering iron. That way, if we test it and it's broke, I can send it back and get another one. Or if something stops working, I know it's something I've done. Now I'm going to plug it into the computer using a cable. By default all of the drivers should be installed but if we quickly jump back to the beta flight interface you can see here that there's actually links to download the other drivers if it doesn't happen automatically. But in 99 times out of 100 it should all be completely automatic. Now what will happen the USB will power everything on the board and it should all light up and then it should appear in beta flight. Now what's probably going to happen is if you've never installed it before then it'll take a second but there we are we can see it we can see the board as I lift the nose up on the quadcopter there it is moving virtually on the screen left and right wow that looks very promising now most flight controllers these days come pre-installed with beta flight so you can upgrade it if you want to but you can get your basic flying done without doing anything else only other thing to be careful of is occasionally the USB cable that you are using is only going to have the power and ground wires in it rather than the ones that are used for the signals that are talking to the board right now. So if you're having problems getting it all connected, try another USB cable as well. Now we've got that done, then let me just disconnect from beta flight. Now we know that that looks good and we'll close that down. The next thing we'll do then is we'll unplug the flight controller and now we will talk about installing the receiver. Now the receiver is the thing that's going to listen to the radio that we'll have in our hands as we fly and it's the thing that will then send the signals into the flight controller. Now there are tons and tons and tons of different options. This one I'm going to be using a Tyrannus radio but you can use anything. What you need to be using though is a flight controller that has SBUS. I would recommend SBUS for any new builds. Now on here we have uh, the connections for SBUS out and we can see we have a ground plus 5 volts and a smart port pin and then an SBUS out which is the one that we want to use. Now if we actually look at the receiver this is really really diddy this thing. These receivers these days are so blooming small and um, that is thumbnail sized 
and we have a cable that's going to attach to it too. Now if I just plug the cable in, hopefully what you'll see, it's the right way around. There we go. The, the things that we're going to connect, the black wire is normally to the ground pin on the flight controller. The red wire is usually plus 5 volts. And then one of the other wires is normally the S plus signal. And that's the one that we're interested in. Now, if we look at the manual for the flight controller, we can see how that is supposed to be connected. So I can connect the flight controller to the receiver using that as a guide. And this is the reason why I always recommend use a flight controller, particularly for your first couple of builds, that has a decent manual. It makes setup so much blooming easier than trying to read something that's been written in Chinese English. Now, if we just go back to the desk to install this into the machine, I need it to go at the front. Now, the way I'm going to install it, I'm going to actually mount it on the front plastic piece. And we know this is the front of the quadcopter because the arrow on the flight controller is pointing this way. So I'm going to mount this at the front because at the back all of the FPV gubbins can fit. I'm going to route the antennas around like that and put some cable ties and a bit of heat shrink to keep them in place. And then that means we're going to have to run the cables onto those pins which are all over here as per the manual. So let me just do that and then we'll come back and have a look. And that's this bit done for now and then we need to quickly talk about how to set up the radio. So here's what it looks like when it's all soldered together. So I use exactly the same process to put these wires onto the flight controller as per the manual. Again, strip the ends, tin them, put a little pool of solder in the individual spots, then heated that little pool of solder and then pushed the wires through the holes and that was everything done. To actually secure the receiver to the front of the model, I've used a little bit of double-sided tape and then I've used the trick that a lot of us are doing at the moment, using a couple of cable ties out on the arms and then routing the antennas down those and keeping them in place with two bits of heat shrink. So that is the receiver all installed. Next thing we need to do then is we need to set up a model on the radio. Now the model for a quadcopter is very, very straightforward. All you need are the four main channels, throttle, aileron, elevator and rudder. Those are going to control how it moves in all orientations and how much power is being sent to the motors. And you also need at least an extra two channels I'd recommend, ideally three. For how you set up a radio for a quadcopter, I'd refer you to the other series on the channel or the manual that came with your radio. And all you're really after, let me just show you on this one. This is the ORX TX6i radio from Hobby King. If I just go into the menu and go down to display, as I move the controls around, there's a throttle. This is called a Mode 2 radio, which means the throttle and rudder is on this side, elevator and aileron is on that side and you can see everything moving on here. I've also assigned two switches which this radio does by default when you create a quadcopter. One of them is on the corner and that moves into three positions. We can use that to select the flight mode that we want the quadcopter to use its flying and another one in here set up by default. That's at the very bottom, auxiliary two, and that we can use to arm the quadcopter so that if we bump the throttle accidentally and it's not armed, then we're not going to have a problem with the prop starting if it's in our hand. So I'm actually not going to use this radio for this because of the receiver that I'm using is compatible with an FR Sky radio. I'm going to use my trusty Tyrannus. Now this is going to talk to me a lot. There's a complete series. <laughs> She's going to talk away at me. There's a complete series on the channel that talks about setting up this kind of radio. For some people, this radio is a little bit overwhelming, but along with its younger brother, the QX7, and the new x Lite that will be coming out soon, this is the best bang for the buck radio, in my opinion, if you can cope with the interface. So what I've done, let me just again show you the same thing. So here's the same kind of display. Again, the first four channels, there's throttle, there's rudder, aileron and elevator. And then I've got three channels or three switches set up on this. One to control my modes. One to control arming. And I've got another one on a momentary switch 
to sound a buzzer. Now we're not installing a buzzer on this, but that's my default model that I copy and reuse every time. The only other things you need to know where they are, and in this one, it's in this screen here, is you need to know a couple of things. On your radio, find out where the sub trim menu is. Uh, you can see it says sub trim at the top. You'll go, you're going to need that for the aileron, elevator, and rudder channel to get them at exactly 1500. I'll show you that in a second. And then you also need to find out where your travel adjustment is on the radio as well, because you don't want the values on the radio going below 1000 and above 2000. You want it just within that range. But again, I'll show you that in a minute. So with the model set up, then the next thing we need to do is bind it to the model. Now, on the model, on our little receiver, there's a little dinky button. And what we need to do is press that as we apply power with the radio in bind mode, and then there will be a digital connection created between the radio and this thing here. So let's get the USB cable back out and let's go through that process. So to bind the radio to the model, uh, some flight controllers will power the receiver from the USB cable. Sadly, this model isn't using a flight controller that does that. So the first job is we're going to have to put the radio into bind. So we get a little beeping noise that's ready to bind. The next thing we need to do then is we're going to have to plug the battery in. Now to get the power from the bottom power distribution board and ESCs into the flight controller, I've had to install that cable. Now again, we've tested this output already, but if you wanted to use something like a smoke stopper, this is just like a bulb in series, it'll limit the current. But as we've already tested this, we should be fine. So we're going to press and hold the bind button, plug in the battery. The ESCs will initially beep, won't give us confirmation tone because there's no signal. We've got lots of flashing lights on the receiver, that was promising. We'll grab the radio, exit out of the bind, and then unplug the battery, and that is the receiver bound. So back to beta flight, and let's finish the setup for the radio. So now with everything bound, we are gonna have to power this little fella, and we're gonna have to plug it into the computer. Now I have my radio turned on uh, with the right model set. So let me just power this thing up. Super job. Grab the USB cable, plug that in as well, and then hopefully Beta Flight will see it, and we can just check that the radio setup's okay. Right, I'll just prove it's all working. Here we go. And then let me move that out of the way so I can bring the radio in. So what we're going to do now in beta flight is we're just going to confirm everything's working. Now by default an awful lot of flight controller, modern flight controllers are set up for SBUS anyway. So usually you'll find that the radio is working straight out the bat. Not working perfectly, but working. And that's because in the ports tab one of the UARTs has been set for serial receiver. That always has to be set somewhere in beta flight for SBUS and in configuration if you go down here into the receiver, it says it's a serial based receiver and set for SBUS. So that was all set up for us without us having to do anything on the flight controller. So thank you, Hollybro, thank you, Beta Flight. But we need to spend a little bit of time here in the receiver. Now, one thing you'll notice if I move the throttle, it's actually moving the roll or aileron control, and that's the wrong way around. If you find that this is the place and the wrong controls are being moved, it's going to be something called the channel map. So I'm going to put it onto, you can try each of these in turn. I'm just going to keep going and clicking save until we find the one that works. There we go. That's the one that matches how my radio is set up. So now the throttle works the right way and the aileron moves the aileron channel, elevator and so forth. Now I have a complete setup for how you do the beta flight pieces. I, I'm going to go through it at some detail in this series, but if you want to kind of skip ahead, you can watch the entire thing on this video. I'll put a link in the description. Now we've got the channel map right. Uh, you can actually kind of see it, um, things moving around. The two or three things that we need to check. First of all, are all the channels on the radio moving in the right way? And by default, they probably will be with modern radios, but to check. The way to check it, with this Mode 2 radio, again throttle on the left hand side, 
we just put all the sticks to the top right hand position on the radio you should see all the values go to their maximum if you put all the sticks to the lowest left hand position all the main controls roll pitch your and throttle will go to the lowest position if they do that then it's the right way round. if you move a control and it's moving in the wrong direction then find the reverse function in your radio and reverse that channel to fix it so that when you do that all the channels go to the highest value now in here as well you'll see as i flick my control switches we can see them moving auxiliary one auxiliary two and auxiliary three as well and we'll do all that set up in beta flight in the next video but that all looks good the other thing we need to check is that the roll pitch and your channels which are the first three channels in beta flight here are all settling at 1500 so if you move them and let go of the stick they come back to 1500 if they're not then what you need to do is find the sub trim setting for that individual channel on your radio and alter the sub trim until the number on the screen in beta flight reads 1500 or as close to as you can you'll probably find even with nice gimbals they'll flicker around one or two points either side of 1500 but just get it as close as you can the next thing to do then is to make sure that the travel on the channels isn't too much for beta flight now beta flight likes to have between a thousand and two thousand as the maximum values I like to be a little bit under on both now with things like the Tyrannus radio you'll find that it tends to overdrive the channels a little bit so it takes it too far and that for some flight controllers can confuse it so what you need to do for that one again this is the travel adjust and on mine you might notice if I bring up to the screen a little bit more you see I've got those four channels set uh, to 95 percent in each direction as opposed to 100 percent and that now means that i can't take the channels below 1000 or above 2000 so everything will be happy now that's done we are very close to getting sorted out in the next video what we'll do is we'll set up the flight modes we'll set up things like fail safe and make sure that's all working we'll also then make sure that all the motors are turning in the right way talk about installing the props and we'll probably take it out for a first test hover before we then go on and install all the fpv gear so join me in that next video where we'll finish this initial setup and actually get this little monster flying if you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.